if you have ever tried to build a search feature in an application or even just been curious about how incredibly fast, accurate, typo tolerant and autocomplete friendly search works on platforms like LinkedIn, you have probably felt the same way as I did. How is something like this even possible? How they are able to run search this fast with this much accuracy on millions and millions of users? Well, in this video, we are going to impact the magic behind modern search. Plus, take it a step further by integrating a powerful search engine into an ongoing LinkedIn clone project. Behind most of the search engines today, like the search that you have on LinkedIn, the search that's powering Elasticsearch, Apache Solar, MongoDB Atlas Search, there is a Java library known as Apache Lucene. This Lucene is built by Doug Cutting in late 1997 while working at Excite. Lucene did not stop to be improved since then. As you can see in this tweet in 2011 where the cutting is saying the fuzzy query of Lucene is 100 times faster. To give you more context about why he started this library, I'm going to play a small video by him. I, Java had just sort of come out and I thought Java looked like a, a cool programming language and I was worried that the internet bubble was about to pop. I was three years early in my prediction. Um, and uh, I was you know, concerned that, that my career uh, wasn't, wasn't very solid working for, for a web company. Uh, and so I wanted to have something to, to fall back on. Uh, so I actually went down to 60% um, time at work, took 40% time, two days a week, uh, stayed home, and um, uh, start, taught myself Java, and um, uh, wrote Lucene. Um, the uh, name is my wife's middle name. Um, and it, I think I did that in about three months. Uh, and then the web thing started to pick up again for a while in the, in the late 90s. Um, and uh, then when Excite went bankrupt in 2000, I, uh, I decided to make Lucene open source because uh, I didn't, didn't have anything else to do with it. I, I realized I didn't really want to start a company. I wasn't an entrepreneur uh, at, at heart. So as you have heard him, he started Lucene because he thought that the web is going to go away, which is funny because today the web is the, the main area of software engineering. That goes to show that you cannot predict the future. Like there are a lot of people that talks uh, nowadays about what AI will do and how AI will shape the, the future and nobody actually can tell for sure. I'm going off topic. You didn't click on this video to talk about predictions, right? So let's get going. So how Apache Lucene works. So Apache Lucene, as all the others uh, search engines, the first thing that it does is called indexing. Search engine indexing is the collecting, parsing, and storing of data to facilitate fast and accurate information retrieval. So if you have built something in the past, like me as a side project, you might have gone into your database, grab all the users, like let's say you are searching a user with its first name. So you'd go in your database and you look for all the users and try to find the user that matches. While this works, it cannot scale actually. This is if you are a company like LinkedIn and you have millions and millions of users. So there is some processing that's done ahead of time before querying, before there is uh, a search being made actually before the user typing something there is some data processing that's made with uh, this indexing strategy and there are different indexing strategies and the one that Lucene uses is called inverted index where it maps tokens to documents instead of the other way around so what you are seeing below here is a simplified version of the early indexing strategy of Lucene. Lucene has evolved since and it's uh, way complex than that but this is going to give you a some understanding about how it is it, okay so it would grab documents today a document for Lucene uh, could be a lot of different things like uh, actual file system documents uh, database columns and other things but it is started for only a file system uh, document so it would go through all these documents and does something that's called tokenization where it would split the document content into small chunks these chunks could be words like english words but also they could be portion of words then it does something that's called normalization converting text to lowercase removing special characters it also does something called filtering so removing stop words words that are in all the documents of your file system like this is not going to be 
helpful to discriminate against your search okay if a word is present in all the documents in your in your uh, file system we would want to use the other words in your search query to give you what you actually want and then it's going to sort these uh, tokens and then create a map as a matter of fact we have two books here the first one is lucene in action and the other one is called database when lucene uh, went through lucene in action it was able to retrieve these uh, tokens like data index lucene in term then in the databases it has retrieved data index in sql okay then it's going to take these two tables and create a final one which is at the right so when i'm searching for uh, like if i type data it directly knows that data is in book number uh, in the document zero and also in document one so as you can see this is very fast because since they are sorted if i'm searching like something uh, like if i'm searching term it would simply go directly to the t instead of looking like in all the other like rows directly it would go to t and then it knows that term is in book uh, number zero so uh, as you might have uh, guessed it this uh, indexing is done before anyone searching anything on our application so we already have done some processing ahead of time and we would store this uh, index uh, table somewhere in often time in a, in, in a file okay on a disk and the industry has evolved and lucene as well so for more than 22 years lucene has evolved to meet new industry demands as i said it was originally to search for file system uh, like documents we are now able to search through columns like in a database we're also able to do a spatial search like a spatial search is something that's very tricky in the sense that let's say you want to know if uh, a, a point that you uh, have gotten with its uh, longitude and latitude is within the united state let's say within the united state so if you try to uh, know that in a brute force way it's going to be uh, very difficult so a lot of research has been done and uh, if you want to do a spatial search lucene is able to do that as well so using only uh, lucene you can do a uh, the things that are here at the left like grabbing the data indexing it and also be able to retrieve it but on modern web applications like linkedin they still use lucene for for all of this but they also have uh, some machine learning models to analyze user intent and retain the right results so how does that work let's say i'm on linkedin and i uh, type let's say software engineer okay the query is going to be uh, like uh, run through a machine learning model that's going to try to understand my intent like what I am trying to search when I tap software engineer like am I searching for people that have the software engineer as a job or I'm searching uh, articles about uh, software engineering so and also if I have made some typos the machine learning models are able to correct it and something that I didn't say is that uh, to be able to know my intent like uh, whether I'm trying to find uh, software engineers or article about software engineering the model would use my like historical activity on the linkedin website as well so they are going to try to use everything that they know about me and that also will play a role in uh, knowing my intent with my query so after my query is run through the model we have like a text like before that we will give it to lucene lucene will use this text to go through its index and retrieve uh, matching results and once more before returning the results the raw results that we are getting from lucene like before we're going to run them through machine learning models to also actually know what is uh, best to be returned using the user's activity the user's intent and like the the user's connections in a lot a lot of uh, different uh, metrics so uh, now that uh, you have i hope some understanding of uh, how these uh, search are built we're gonna go and we're gonna create a simple integration of lucene in a, in a linkedin clone project that we have been building uh, for months so uh, before diving into the code let me actually uh, log in to the project and also if you are new uh, to this series it's a project that we have been building with the spring boot in java on the back end and react.js on the front end it's a very complete linkedin clone so uh, the search that i have implemented using uh, apache lucene is uh, this one so i am searching users so let's say i search for john so i'm getting uh, this uh, 
this John, okay, which is the most accurate one. And I'm getting other results as well because I have actually implemented a fuzziness in the query. So since we don't have a machine learning model that will fix uh, typos, Apache Lucene allows us to use a fuzzy research. A fuzzy research is basically a research where we allow the user to make some mistake in his query. So let's say while typing John, he actually changed the place of the a of the H and he, he added like here at the beginning here. So we are still ranking John as the uh, most accurate uh, search for this uh, query. So the repo of the project is gon gonna be down in the YouTube description and you can set it up and running locally by reading the uh, readme here. And if you want to watch the videos where we built all of this, there is a the playlist is also going to be down in the uh, youtube description below so uh, that has been said let me actually uh, show you the code so i actually before making the video i added lucene on its own okay without using any spring boot functionality so for that uh, you need to go on uh, maven to grab the java package which is uh, spring uh, apache lucene uh, core and also Apache Lucene uh, query parser. So these two, you need these two to be able to add bare Lucene in a Java project without using any Spring Boot or uh, GPA, uh, Java Persistent uh, API functionalities. But uh, the thing is that since we are actually indexing users in our database and the database is going to change a lot, whenever the database uh, changes, we have to manually update our index, which is uh, quite uh, uh, difficult actually. So uh, upon researching, I actually found out that uh, Hibernate, the ORM that's behind the Spring Data GPA, integrates Lucene already. We used to have to uh, add some uh, decorations on the fields of our user that we want to index, and everything is going to work uh, like uh, magic, okay? So Hibernate search integrates also Elasticsearch and they are an abstraction layer and they add more functionalities like being able to have a distributed index. So if you have multiple nodes of your application running on the cloud, you might want to go with Elasticsearch or Apache Solar. As I said, they are built on top of Lucene. But uh, for us, we are simply going to be uh, using uh, Lucene here. And if you want to read the uh, documentation of the Lucene itself, so it's going to be on lucene.apache.org. So uh, coming into uh, the code, so to integrate uh, Hibernate search, first we need to add, and then as I said uh, here, so uh, Hibernate search works with Lucene but also with Elasticsearch. So we need to tell what we want to use uh, with uh, Hibernate search. So in our case, it's Lucene. And we also need uh, this for logging. And it is actually used under the hood by these uh, libraries. And after adding uh, these libraries, uh, the first thing that we need to do is actually to go on uh, the models that we want to index and add this indexed uh, uh, decorator that is, as you can see, uh, coming from uh, hibernate uh, search mapper and we're saying that the index that's going to be uh, saved like in our database uh, in our uh, system uh, file is going to is going to be called users and then we're going to choose the fields that we want to index so here i'm saying that i am indexing the first name the last name the company and also the position so uh, that is uh, the first step then we also have to add some uh, properties here. We, we should specify the uh, backend type that we are using. So if it was Elasticsearch, we would uh, like write Elasticsearch here, okay? Since we're using Lucene, we're gonna say that we are working with Lucene here. And then we need to specify uh, the location of the indexes that are being saved. So in my case, I have actually added it in the uh, project itself. So this is the indexes that uh, is, uh, Lucene are creating. And I am actually uh, also git ignoring this Lucene folder by adding a, uh, so 
by updating my git in your here and then i have uh, created a so a features folder that i have called search where i have this configuration class so where i am actually cleaning up the index uh, every time the uh, application like uh, shut down and and then i have a service in in this service i'm using the entity uh, so manager that's coming from jakarta persistence and i am wrapping it into a, a search session that is uh, coming from hibernate search so to do a query so when i get a query i am uh, searching through first name last name position and company the thing that i have indexed before and i'm also allowing some fuzziness here okay so uh, let me show you actually earlier i've showed you that if i uh, search for a john like this although i have a typo it's showing me uh, the right john let's say that i don't have any fuzziness here and if i save the application is going to restart so now if i uh, look for uh, john with the correct uh, syntax so i'm getting all these johns okay but if i make a typo let's say i write like this i don't have uh, anything so if we had a machine learning model that would uh, like correct this maybe we are good to go but since we don't have a machine learning model having some fuzziness here is a good idea since users uh, make typos all the time and we can specify how much fuzziness you are you allow by adding a number here so it could be one to up to four i think if i'm not uh, mistaken and finally i have a, a search controller which is in the same folder that's mapped to the CRL and I'm calling the search that is in my service and on the front end I have actually simply a let me show you a react component that is called search which is here so um, and I have uh, this so this input so while they every time the user type uh, something here I am updating a state that's called search term and whenever this uh, search state uh, changes, I am calling the backend uh, URL and getting back uh, use like suggestions. Okay, users, I'm setting them here. And this request uh, function actually is simply using uh, fetch under the hood. We have built in previous videos. And then I'm just uh, uh, showing them here below. And I have got some styling so that uh, when I have like a lot of users. I would have some uh, scrolling within the component instead of going all over the place. So as you can see on the front end side, it's uh, very simple. The client actually doesn't know how much engineering is going behind to get these uh, users, but that's how it is. And actually here I'm type, I'm calling the backend every time the user type something but normally you would add a, a debouncing uh, logic so that we, we don't make a lot of requests to our uh, backend which with this so we would remove this one if you want to find the code later on it's going to be the commit number uh, 14 so it's going to be the one just after uh, this one I am saying the commit because we are going to add more things into this project and uh, you might find uh, newer uh, changes in the future so yeah guys uh, that's it for this video thank you so much for watching until the end and let me know if uh, it was helpful by liking it by commenting by sharing with your friends who are also maybe interested in these topics and by uh, subscribing there are a lot that we need to cover and uh, see you in the next one uh, very soon